Calvinism is a cancer that infects Reformed theology. Beware. Only the Bible can give you a full cancer screening. Submit to it. The word TULIP is often used as an acronym to summarize the five core doctrines of Calvin. Total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints, or once saved, always saved. Last time we looked at T, total depravity. Now let's look at U, unconditional election. Matthew 24, 22 through 24 from the NIV reads as follows. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Question. If unconditional election means that elected are also unconditionally saved, then what did Jesus mean when he spoke these words? Why would he say that it is possible for false teachers to deceive even the elect? Why give the warning, do not believe it, if election is unconditional? Why admonish them to remain alert to the dangers of false messiahs and false prophets if their election had no conditions? Please don't misunderstand. Just seven verses after our passage, Jesus does say that he will gather his elect from the four winds. Truly all the elect of that gathering will be saved. But the previous words of our Lord are equally true. It is possible that some of the elect will succumb to the deception and will be sifted out because they believed in false messiahs. Only by submitting to the harmony of these passages can the whole counsel of God be truly discovered. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 10 from the NIV reads as follows. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. If unconditional election is truly unconditional, why did the Holy Spirit place so many conditions on our election? Why make every effort, said twice by the way, if our election is without conditions? Why add to our faith if our election is unconditional? Why use a term like self-control if self has no influence over control? And we are not intended to employ self-control as a condition of confirming our election. Why confirm your calling and election if election has no conditions? Please don't misunderstand. Just two verses earlier, Peter does say, His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Truly, it is only by the help of God that we can be truly godly. But equally true are the words that follow. To accept His godliness, we must make every effort, add to our faith, practice self-control, and confirm our calling. Only by submitting to the harmony of these passages can the whole counsel of God be truly discovered. It's time to discard the false teachings about a mild-mannered Messiah. It's time to embrace the actual nature of Christ. Grace is not always warm and fuzzy. When the house is burning down around us and materialistic humanism has lulled us into a disastrous slumber, blunt and to the point might be our only salvation. 
Please join me on live Facebook every Friday morning at 11 Central Time for an expanded discussion of topics like this. Last Days Live examines end times, current events, and real-time applications for the vigilant Christian. Archived recordings can be found at SonnyChowles.com.